In this video, we will learn how to draw a three-dimensional cell membrane in Adobe Illustrator. So here's an example of what we're going to be drawing. And you can see it's two embedded proteins. And the nice thing about this is I can move this proteins, these proteins around. So uh, that makes it really nice to be able to modify it later on. So I'm going to start from scratch. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is draw the polar head group. I'm going to click and hold over here. You might see a square. Just click and hold until you see this list. Click on the ellipse, and we're going to draw a circle about this large. Okay. I'm going to make it brown, make the out, outside brown, and then I'm going to make the inside kind of this larger basal group. So I clicked on the stroke, and then click over here on the fill and change the fill to a lighter color. If you don't see this control toolbar, go up to uh, Window and then click on the control. It's very useful. You should have it. Also, you might want to look over here and include all of these options over here because we're going to be using several of them. And to do that, just go up to Window and then click on the menu item and drag it over and drop it. Okay, so we, in order to make this a pattern brush, it won't allow, pattern brushes won't allow gradients or any sort of transparent object. So what we have to do is we have to make it look three dimensional because I kind of like a spherical look for the polar head group. And then we're going to draw the lipid chains after that. So let's let's make a spherical looking object. We're going to do it simply. We're not going to make it too complicated. So I'm going to hold alt and then click on the left mouse button and drag it over and I'm going to draw the lighter portion and then maybe a little little bit of a shade shaded portion of the sphere and then kind of a little bit of a, a, a glow or a glare so I'm going to remove the outline and I'm going to copy this so hold alt and drag let's make this a little bit darker okay something like that and put the spacing somewhere about like that. And I'm going to highlight this and then go over here to Pathfinder and click to divide. And that's going to split all of the different sections apart. So now I can just click on, I can ungroup it. So right click and click ungroup. Click on this portion and then delete. And then now you have this shaded portion. And then we're going to Let's just drag it over and drop. But before we do that, I'm going to click on this object. I'm going to make this stroke be on the outside of the shape. See, right now, it's kind of equally distant across the shape. I want to move it to the outside, so I'm going to go up to Stroke. And then you see these three options here where it says a line stroke. I'm going to click on this one where it puts the, the line on the outside of the path like this and then drag it over and make it to where it snaps in there and then I'm going to put a little bit of a glare on top of here so I'm going to draw a little bit of, a little bit of an oval shape and I'm going to hold shift and click with my left mouse button on this object and you might see ARGB red green blue I want to change the color scheme because I want it to be I want to be able to change the lightness or how white or dark the color is. So I'm going to click over here to these three lines and go down to HSB. And then that gives me the option of going darker or lighter. And I'm just going to go lighter and cancel. So I'm going to click on the regular mouse button and I'm going to hold shift and kind of change that oval to look like that. So that's a, roughly a 45 degree angle. Make it a little bit wider. Okay. That looks pretty good. So that looks, and then I'm going to group this object. Hold Control and press G. Okay, so there's the polar head group, and now I want to draw the lipid chains. So I'm going to click and hold on the, what looks like a circle and a pencil, and then I'm going to go down to pencil. And I'm going to change, I'm going to remove the fill 
and then add a dark brown for the line thickness and that's the same dark brown as this outline so the, and that's the same dark brown as the outline so I'm going to draw a little squiggly line here and if it's too smooth then what you need to do is press enter and that gives you the options here and this is moved all the way over to the smooth so as you can draw a perfectly smooth line I want to change it to be a little more rough and click OK. And then now, since the, uh, the line is selected, I can just draw back over this line and it will automatically change it for me. And then I'm going to draw another line here. OK. So now I want to change this. I don't want this to be lines. I want this to be spheres and make it look a little bit more atomic. So I'm going to click over to the ellipse tool. I'm going to hold the shift key and then hold my left mouse button. And that's going to make a sphere. And then I'm going to flip the fill and stroke. So this, if you look over here to this arrow, this is going to flip what is the stroke and make it the fill. Okay. And then vice versa, whatever the fill is going to be turned into the stroke. And that's about the size of the sphere that I want, or the circle that I want. I'm going to click on the brushes menu, so the brushes menu drops out. I'm going to click on this object, and I'm going to drag it over. Oh, let me try one more time. Why aren't you doing that? Let me zoom in. Click and drag. And you want to see that little plus sign. And so for some reason I had to zoom in, I don't know why, but you want to see this little plus sign and this blue box that's around. That's going to, What that tells me is it's going to add this shape to the brushes menu. And when I release, it's going to give me several options. I want to click the scatter brush and click OK. And I'm just going to click OK for right now. We'll change those settings later. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and spin my mouse wheel so I zoom out. Highlight these two lines and then click on this we want to have a little bit of overlap. So I'm going to double click on this object and I'm going to change the spacing so that it's a little bit less. I want there to be a little bit of an overlap. So I'm going to click OK. Say apply to strokes, yes. There we go. I'm going to delete this one. And I want the polar head group to be in front of these lipid chain so I'm going to click on this right click and then click go down to arrange and then bring to front so it brings it in front of those I want to make sure these are aligned so I'm going to draw kind of some guides so draw a little bit of a line here make it black then I'm going to click on this or I'm going to hold the alt key click drag it over Notice how it's a little off center. I want to change that. I'm going to highlight these or select these two objects and just kind of move them over so they're roughly in the center. Delete those two black lines. Highlight this. Group it. Hold the Alt key and drag it over. And then I'm going to hold the Shift key and that's going to snap it to 45 degree angles. So I make sure I'm exactly uh, rotated around 180 degrees. I'm going to line it up a little closer. And then now I want to make sure that the glares or the light source is on the same side. So this, this is a 3D appearing object. It would be 3D if a light was sitting right up here on the top left 45 degree angle shining down on the sphere. I want to make that same light is also going to be shining on this object too. So I want to make sure that that's consistent. Sometimes small things like that can make a big difference. So I'm going to hold the shift key and rotate this around. So now they're the light's coming in at the same angle for both of them. Highlight these two objects. Now I'm going to add this to the brush menu. So you see that little plus sign? Then you're going to make it a scatter brush and click OK. And then we're just going to click OK. Hold the Alt key to uh, zoom out. And then so now we're going to actually draw the membrane. 
So move down, I'm going to click on the pencil tool, press enter because now I want it to be smooth. Click OK. I'm going to just draw about a smooth sigmoidal shape. Click on this. And now I want to change the spacing here. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to reduce the spacing. Let me zoom in. So hold. I'm going to click just OK. So apply to stroke so I can zoom in to see what's going on. Double click again. And let's, let's take a look. And you want there to be quite a bit of overlap. That's probably good right there. Click OK. Apply to strokes. Zoom out again. That's part of the membrane. Now we want the 3D portion of it. And actually, just to make things go smoothly, I'm going to change the angle. So I'm going to click on this direct select and click on this one um, uh, anchor point and drag it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull up this handle. Okay. Yeah, that's probably good. Hold the Alt key and drag it out. Okay, the next thing is I want to create that. Let me just move this down just a little bit. Next thing is I want to create that um, the 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 top of the membrane as it's going along this direction. So to do that, I'm going to click on this sphere here. Hold Control and press C, and click away. Hold control, press V. Okay, and now I'm going to drag this object into the brush menu and say OK. And I'll click on scatter and click OK. And then I'm just going to click OK for right now. Let's drag this away. Now I want to take this exact line, hold the Alt key, and drag it over and click on this sphere. And I want to drag it right over here. And I want to hold the control key and press the left or open bracket just to bring it. And that steps at one, one level towards the back so that it's behind this membrane. And the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust this spacing so that it matches the front lying membrane. So I'm going to double click on this and let's reduce the spacing till we get it to match. Looks pretty good. Click OK. Apply to strokes. OK. So now we're going to copy this by holding Alt and dragging over, kind of go up this direction. And I want to make it look as if it's going into the back, like it's, um, it's going into um, the background. So in the background, the objects will be smaller. So I'm going to change the stroke to 0 0.75 thickness, and it'll make those spheres a little smaller. So I'm gonna, I have that selected. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna make sure this is in the back. So I'm gonna right click, arrange, send to back. Then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click on this, um, this line right here, the the new line that we drew that just has the spheres. And then we're gonna use a blend tool. We're gonna use a blending tool. It's right over here. If you don't see it because you don't have two rows or two columns here, go up to Window, go down to Toolbars, and click Advanced. You should see two columns after that. And so you'll click on this Blend tool. You have to have both of these objects selected, so make sure that they're selected. I'm going to click on this object and then click on this object. Default is just a space of one in this case. We're going to press enter and we're going to change that so that it has many more steps. So specified steps. And then we're going to click the up arrow. Just keep on clicking it. 
It's going to be a little bit of a delay. And you want it to overlap with each other. Keep going. Let that click OK. So you want these, to, you want each row to overlap with the, the next row. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this. So that's back here. And again, we're going to change the, this was 75% of the size of this, the, the foreground. So we're going to change the scaling of this object as well. Make sure this is, let's group these. Hold shift and click this one. Hold control, press G. Then I'm going to click the S button. So you should see like a little uh, blue target center. Press enter. Then we're going to change the size to 75%. And I'm going to drag it so that it looks pretty aligned. And we're going to bring it to the front. Right click, arrange, bring to front. Then we're going to group this one, drag it over to that it's in front of this one. Again, right click, arrange, bring to front. Hold shift so that both of these objects are selected. Use the blend tool to click from here to there. And now we're going to press enter. Again, specified steps, and we're going to press the upward key until this is spaced properly. That's pretty good. Click OK. Let's Okay, so there is our 3D membrane. And if you want to embed proteins in there, we're going to have to take another step. Next step is to click on this, go up to Object, and go down to Flatten Transparency, and click OK. Now this might be computationally intensive, because now you, your computer has to compute all the specific little objects. So this might start to slow your computer down a little bit. So I'm going to click the ellipse tool, draw an ellipse, click the directs, the selection tool, change the fill to, I'm just going to set it as green. And then I'm going to hold control and press X, and that's going to copy and then delete that object. But you still have the object saved on your clipboard. I'm going to click over here on this, this, you should see these three little objects, these three little icons down here, just below the color options. One is a circle and a square. The square is in front of the circle. And then you see, in other words, the circle is in front of the square. Click that center one. What that's going to do is when you paste the object, it's going to paste it behind whatever object that you select. So I'm going to double click on this so that I'm inside this group and I'm going to click somewhere in the center here, maybe that object, and I'm going to hold control and press V. Hold shift, press the left arrow button. You'll see it kind of peek out of that membrane. Okay. And you can draw a, you know, a protein that looks like that. Again, it's behind a lot of objects, so we're going to let's uh, make it green, or let's do purple, make it really thick. Hold control and press X. Click on maybe an object right here, control V. And there you go. That is how you draw a three-dimensional cell membrane in Adobe Illustrator.